shut up compressor. What's up everyone, Matt here with Duke's Models and welcome to part four of this P47M build. Now, since we last jumped away when I was painting individual cockpit boxes with Liquitex black ink, I've gone quite a bit further down the road. Uh, part of that is that when I'm doing a lot of the small detail stuff, I have a hard time doing it on camera. A lot of times my head is sort of right in here and that really messes up being able to shoot it. Plus, it's really hard to narrate while doing those really small, fine tasks. But I think this is a good spot to check in. I've gotten through sort of the main cockpit painting, decaling, etc., uh, with one major notable exception. So let's review what I've been doing. So here we've got the port side cockpit wall of the jugs cockpit. And here is the rest of it. As you can see, it's coming along nicely. So what have we done since part three? Well, as you can see, the, let me remove the control stick here. The one big change to the control stick is it now has a red trigger, which I don't know if that's anachronistic or not, but eh. So as you can see on this side, we've gone beyond the black boxes and things like that. And I've gone ahead and added various painted details in terms of the silver in here, which came from uh, Ammo's, Ammo's quite lovely steel metallic color. Uh, they just came out with metallic colors not too long ago and they're great for that sort of little brushwork detail. Some stencils from Airscale to bring a little bit more detail and fun to the events in here. And some more stencils from, and I know I'm just gonna totally fuck this up because I realize I've never actually had to say it before, uh, but I believe it's Ennies. So these things are amazing. They are basically little generic stencils that represent sort of labels for switches and knobs and toggles and all that kind of a thing. And they have come in super handy for, you know, like right here, labels for the switch gear or the various tick marks on the actual throttle. So it's a very small thing, but it adds a lot of uh, semblance of detail in here. Now these have also gotten a acrylic wash, which I'm not a huge fan of in 132nd scale. I feel it's, uh, it's a bit crazy, but with 148th, when you are closing something like this up and sticking it in fuselage, you kind of want to do a bit of stage makeup, you know? So you think about actors on the stage, their makeup is a bit exaggerated. So, you know, brighter, you know, brighter cheeks, stronger cheekbones, stronger eye makeup so that you can see their expressions on the stage. Cheerleaders do the same thing. Uh, basically, figure painters do the same thing with highlights and shadows and sort of exaggerating that for scale so that when you look at something that's, you know, yay tall at a distance, you can recognize facial features. But if you get really close, it looks really, really weird. So I'm basically doing something similar here, sort of giving this a bit of an oomph of contrast that I probably wouldn't in 132nd scale. But because it's 148th, I want to make sure that some of these details get preserved. And you can really see that going to affect down here in the floor with the various fasteners having that sort of shadow line around them. And I will walk through in just a moment how to make and apply that wash. It's really stupid easy. Uh, another benefit to that acrylic wash. Well, it'd be easier to take things off if I took the tape off. Another benefit of that acrylic wash is that, as I mentioned, I think when I was doing the Liquitex painting, that Liquitex black ink stuff is great for picking up little boxes, but it completely bleeds and falls apart under decal solvent. So with this acrylic wash, it's basically in addition to sort of picking out these little details and you can see like on the map case and things like that, in addition to picking out those details and sort of giving them that heightened sense of contrast, it's also basically a clear acrylic gloss. And so it is gonna be protecting and sealing the Liquitex and all that. 
So not as many stencils and things over here. There's there aren't that many in the jug, which is kind of frustrating. A uh, little gauge thing here, little stencil line right there, little dials around right here. That's pretty much it. Now looking at the floor, no decals in here. This is all paint. But I will note that the HGW fabric harnesses have been installed. Uh, these are definitely fussier in 148th than they are in 32nd, but they're still doable. And these have also received that acrylic wash, which as you can see settles very nicely into some of the surface details, gives them a good sense of depth and detail without looking necessarily filthy. And as you can see, uh, I know I talked about it, I believe in part one, with the harness wrapping over this cross brace piece. Same thing still applies. Now, one thing that I'm up in the air about, and we're just gonna to to see how it does, is this Edward Luke panel uh, that they have. It's one of those things that seems like a great idea, but when you start looking at it, like those gauges are really bright and they have a very cool, almost bluish cast to them. Like in some of the photos I've taken of this, they do show up blue. And I don't know. I just, I feel like it could be better defined. Um, something about it just doesn't quite seem right to me. So I'm going to hold on to this because that's easy to do. None of these, you know, the, the gun sight thing, the, the mount still has to be painted a little bit. The rudders, I mean, all this stuff is just press fit right now. There's nothing fancy going on with it. So I can just let this sit on the sidelines and try something else. And I originally got a Yahoo panel for this thing, but I wasn't happy with it because, let's bring the Edward back again. That notch in the, top of the, in the top of the instrument panel, so right in here, that square thing basically, that is not cut out in the Yahoo panel at all. And getting in there, especially this horizontal piece and cutting that out of photo etch cleanly Huge, huge pain in the ass. Uh, it also doesn't have this sort of kinked out little portion here on the side, and it looks very flat, which most Yahoo panels do a good job of bringing the illusion of depth. And the one for the P47 just feels kind of phoned in. So overall, I wasn't too thrilled with it. Um, if push comes to shove, I will use this one. But I was thinking about it today, and after some conversations on the Facebooks, I recalled that to me is P47 instrument panels are actually quite good. Um, I was pretty happy with the one I did, God, it has to have been a decade ago now, uh, for their P47D that I did as Hairless Joe. And I literally painted it and then I used the kit decals for the instruments. Just like that, they're still here on this P47M. And I'm generally not a fan of Tamiya decals, but instrument panels are one of those things that even if the decals suck, I tend to have good results with. So I'm going to give the kit panel a go and see how it does. And I've gone ahead and as you can see here, it's been primed and it has been painted with one of my favorite colors in MRP's arsenal, 255 Night Camo Black. Now this is basically one of their not quite blacks. Um, see if we can you know, bring it in here next to like the Liquitex black of the box there. This is slightly lighter and it's got a very, very slight cool cast to it. Almost like I hesitate to say blue, uh, but it's definitely on that cooler side of things. So it's just a little bit off from black. And if you're trying to go with uh, something that, you, that is black but you can still detail and do interesting things with it's a good option i'm also hoping to get a little bit of contrast from the gauge decals that way but just like i've done in the cockpit here i want to go ahead and add that acrylic wash to really pop the contrast now on these i did a mix of tamiya rubber with a little bit of uh their black in here this one the wash is just going to be straight black uh, basically to get as much contrast around the gauge or you know the gauge binnacles and things like that as I possibly can. Uh, the idea is when it's kind of sitting here like this and you can kind of see into it, these things will be better defined. So I know there are some questions on 
Scale Modeler's critique group today about how to make this wash. Well, it's pretty simple. So I've already got some water here to the water. You can add future if you have any or any sort of self-leveling acrylic gloss. I'm gonna use all clad aqua gloss and you basically fill the rest of the damn thing up. Nothing difficult there. And then a little bit of Tamiya XF1. It doesn't really matter what gloss or not gloss you use with this. Um, at least in my experience. So I'm just going to add four drops. It's more than I would normally do, but because we're dealing with a black panel or an almost black panel, a little bit extra helps, right? Where's my stir stick? There's my stir stick. So grab this, whip it on up. Now it's going to go lighter because the aqua gloss is white in the bottle. It dries clear and it gets darker as it goes, so no need to worry there. You're not going to be painting this with intermediate blue. All right, because this is a small panel, we're going to use a relatively small brush. Let's go ahead and do test piece back here, see how we're looking. Basically, all that you do is you just put this stuff on, let it do its thing, and as it sets up, it'll be very curious to see how it just uh, kind of latches into the surface details. I literally just had a bug fly into my head. Awesome. So it makes me nervous when these things are moving around on tweezers because the last thing I want it to do is go flying off across the garage. And we're just going to let that literally sit there and set up for a bit. And when we come back, it should be all nice and pretty. All right, so I've let the acrylic wash dry. And here is what we are looking at. Now, it's a subtle effect because we're working on such a dark color. But, you know, if you look at the right light, you can definitely see where the black is settled around the details and given it more pop than it would otherwise have. So now it's time to play with Tamiya decals, these. Now in the past, I have done crazy things like just dump the whole freaking sheet onto the instrument panel and go from there. I'm not gonna do that this time. I think I'm gonna use some clever cutting to cut this into a few pieces and maybe proceed uh, piecemeal, give one's time to do their thing, settle in and dry fully adhere before I move on to the next, but let's go ahead and do one or two of these. Okay, so I've gone ahead and cut out the three that would go on this panel right here. Get them in the water and get some various solutions to play with. We're gonna use a little bit of microset to help place the place the decals. And we'll probably use some stronger stuff to go the rest of the way. I'm 
Yeah, I'm really, really gonna need to hold this. So, thanks to the magic of editing and just turning the fucking camera off, here is the Tamiya kit instrument panel with the kit gauges and a few aftermarket stencils applied and a few small details picked out. And one thing I like about this is the look of these gauges is just phenomenal. I mean, the decals themselves are a pain in the ass, the carrier film is super thick, and to get these down, I basically kind of cut loosely around all of them, applied them. Tried some of Tamiya's Mark Fit Strong, and it was an absolute failure. So these are settled down uh, by the lovely Solvacet and Guns Mr. Mark Softer. But one thing I like about these gauges is, to me, they really look the part. Uh, you know, that slightly yellowed tone, slightly different tone from the rest of the panel. And when you put them into the actual cockpit... You know, this is even before clear coating and then putting some UV curing glue onto the gauge faces. They look the part quite nicely. The only thing I don't like is how thick the panel is from front to back. Um, not really much I can do about that though because I want to preserve all the gauge backs in the back here so I can put some wiring into them. But generally I like this quite a bit. Now, just for shits and giggles, let's compare it to what I was using before, which is this Edward look panel. Now, looking straight down on them, the Edward looks pretty damn nice, right? The problem is, when you look at it from different angles, and you kind of lose that gloss sheen on the, on the gauge faces that you get when you're looking straight on it, you know, you bring it up here, and those things look really, really white just shockingly white. Uh, in a lot of photos, they even take on like a blue cast, which just does not work. They also, some of them also seem to be in like color. Like these right here have, you know, patches of either green or blue in them. And this focus line, I don't know where that comes from. I've, I've seen that in, you know, Cold War Soviet jets. I've seen that in P-51s where it kind of keeps the pilot focused on certain critical instruments. But at the same time, it's not something I've ever seen in a jug instrument panel. So overall, I don't know. This thing is, I think, more frustrating than it's worth, especially from sort of these top angles that you will be seeing it from. So I am going to go ahead and pin my hopes to, come on, to the Tamiya instrument panel instead. So next up with this thing is going to be sealing it with a clear, doing a little tiny bit of weathering, and then dropping in those UV curing glue gauge faces that give it a nice sheen and will pop it off from the rest of the, well, the rest of the panel. So what else do we have to do on the interior? Well, the next big thing that we have to do is the gun sight. Basically. Um, the Ares gun sight frame is awesome, I love it. But I had to cut off the sort of mounting clamp from the kit and glue it to that. So I need to paint that black and I need to do a little bit of detailing in here so that it's not all just the same tone of black. There's you know some brass there that I missed. So I'm gonna do that up and then we're gonna go ahead and finish out the cockpit. <laughs> 